I hate to break it to you, but you might be playing with your metronome completely wrong. This video is a little different. It's gonna be maybe a little bit rantier than normal, but I think it's good and, and it's something that I've really been thinking a lot about lately. So if you like my sort of general musical rants, then click the like button on this video so I know to make more stuff like this and that this was helpful for you. But let's talk about what I mean by playing with your metronome wrong. This goes for any kind of steady beat, whether you're just tapping your foot or clapping and counting a rhythm or playing with an actual metronome or even playing with a conductor, it applies as well. I think a lot of times people think that you turn on your steady beat or your metronome or your conductor if you have a uh, handy dandy at home conductor and that's the steady beat and then you need to play your music in such a way that lines up with that steady beat. So if your metronome's at 80 or whatever it may be and you're thinking like, okay, and now I'm going to play quarter notes at 80, da, 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 da. You might be playing the right speed, but you end up not lining up with your metronome. And it happens in all kinds of different ways and different rhythms too. And I think in general, when you're trying to do this, where you're trying to match the speed, it is doing two separate things that's not really possible. I get this all the time with students who say that they can't tap their foot and play in time at the same time because they have to focus so much about tapping their foot that it messes up the speed of their playing. And if that's the case, that's an indication that you're thinking in two separate ways. When you're doing that, you're thinking like, okay, get my foot tapping at the steady speed and then play, go. And hopefully it lines up. And when it starts not lining up, you get off and feel like your foot's messing you up or your rhythm's messing you up. But that's not the case at all. What it means is that you're thinking of your rhythms in the wrong way, you're thinking of your steady beat in the wrong way, and you're trying to react and line things up instead of doing what you should be doing. But let me talk about how this is wrong first before I talk about how to do it right. So when you're playing this way, it's, it's very reactionary and you're letting the beat happen, then trying to play your stuff and then letting the next beat happen and trying to play your stuff. So if you're even just doing quarter notes with this, you get this sort of not great alignment where it's sort of steady beat, da, 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 da. Um, it may not be that noticeable where it's actually late behind each one, but once you start doing maybe an eighth note and two sixteenth notes with the steady beat, you start to get and it's not the right rhythm and it feels like, oh, it's so hard to do this at the right speed with the steady beat because it's not lining up. Now, the secret, the way to fix this is to not think about the steady beats happening and you're placing your rhythms with it. Your rhythms are creating the steady beat. The steady beat is predictable and you know where the next steady beat's gonna be and you're doing the work to line things up so that you reach the next steady beat at the right time. In this way, the metronome isn't a click that's telling you when the steady beat is. The metronome is a measure of time that's telling you when the next steady beat is going to be. And your rhythms have to work the same way where your rhythms pace in such a way that it leads to the next steady beat. And in that way, it's really easy to tap your foot with what you're playing because what you're playing is creating the rhythm that's lining up with the steady beat. Rather than reacting to a beat, playing your stuff, reacting to the beat, playing your stuff, you're playing your stuff to the beat, playing this next stuff to the next beat, to the next beat. This is why whenever we're practicing a single measure at a time, it makes sense to go to the downbeat of the next measure because so much of music leads forward to the next beat rather than stopping in the middle of a beat. It's the same logic be behind why I like to group 16th notes as two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, rather than one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, because when you're grouping the second way with the emphasis on one, then you end up reacting to the beat. And you could do any speed, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that's not actually a precise or even rhythm. Whereas if you make two, three, four lead to the next one, it's much easier to make that precise. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Hey, look at that, I'm landing 
on the beat every time. So the way to actually do this in your practice is yes, get your steady beat going, but don't just listen to the metronome and react to the metronome. Use the metronome to set your internal steady beat and hear that steady click and realize, okay, that's, that's the spacing in time. Anticipate where that next one's going to be. So then you can place even your very first note, bum, bum, right on time with it because you're not trying to line up with it. You're anticipating where it's going to be and lining up with where you anticipate that it's gonna be. It's sort of forward processing rather than backwards processing. So I hope that made sense. This was a, a really quick, just sort of blurting it all out rant style video. Um, I hope you found it enjoyable and I hope that you get a benefit from this the next time you practice. Try implementing this, see what you're doing when you practice with a, a metronome. And if you struggle to tap your foot while you play or to play with a metronome, I bet this is the reason why. And hopefully it will help you to think forward, think about anticipating where that beat is so you can line up well with it. And of course, as always, Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, hit the like, subscribe to the channel for more clarinet and music tips, and I look forward to seeing you in another video.